what's new from the Barbados Lightning Power Company with your host, Nicole Scantlebury. Hello, and welcome to our September edition of What's New Radio. School is back in session, and we wish parents and students a safe and successful first term, especially those children starting school for the first time, like my own baby girl. In support of children across our island, our teams have been very busy behind the scenes this summer on a number of social responsibility initiatives. To highlight some of our outreach programs, we have made back to school donations to churches and community organizations and given safety presentations to summer camps across the island. Throughout the hurricane season, we continue to strengthen our partnership with the Department of Emergency Management with the donation of ham radios to community district emergency organizations. And in August, we hosted a successful radio net simulation where we used a base radio to connect to DEOs across the island. We value our work in the community and we are committed to finding more opportunities to support the vulnerable and those in need. My name is Sharon Bellamy Thompson, founder of Fishers of Men Charity. For over 35 years, I have been feeding the poor and making sure kids have school clothes and something to eat. The charity was formed five years ago as a charity. All this time, I was doing from my pockets until some six years ago when some great people and companies stepped in. Every day, I feed over 100 persons. I give out hampers every week. As school is about to begin, Fishers of Men Charity took some hundred and something kids last week shopping for their school supply. And also, like but the Barbados Light of Power has stepped in and give a great day donation for stationaries for the kids. I want to say a big thank you to Jackie Marshall Clark and to the Barbados Light and Power for stepping in at this great time to help the children. What's new from the Barbados Light and Power Company? I'd also like to say thank you to my colleagues at Light and Power who are always so keen to help. Your voluntary involvement is so much appreciated. You're listening to What's New Radio with me, Nicole Scantaberry. Globally, dementia is one of the biggest challenges we face, with nearly 50 million people living with dementia worldwide. So World Alzheimer's Month in September is particularly important to raise awareness and educate the general public about this growing disease. The Barbados Alzheimer's Association is our covenant partner. We're working with them to share information and help educate Barbadians on this important subject. We're committed to health and wellness not only for our employees, but also in our communities. Today, I have President of the Association, Pamelia Brereton, with us. Pamelia, welcome to Watts New Radio. Thank you. Can you give us a Barbados perspective? How many people live with this condition? Actually, back in 2014, we had an estimate of over 4,000 people living in Barbados with dementia. Now, this is 2022. And those numbers have to be more than that by now. I believe they're probably over 5,000 people. Could you tell us a bit about your association? What support do you give to persons affected by Alzheimer's and their families? Well, the support that we give would be more or less on the educational level. And sometimes we talk to persons who are really in need. Somebody might be in need of pampers or something like that. And we will try our best to help. But the majority of what we were doing is trying to get the public of Barbados to understand what dementia is about. We also offer a training program, which we call a participation program. What that program does is actually try to train people, especially the ones that are taking care of mom and dad at home. But we also invite people from various institutions too, because a lot of the nurses are not trained to deal with persons with dementia. So that program teaches you how to deal with a situation like someone may not want to take a bath or somebody may not want to eat or how, why is, why is mom holding the food in her mouth and not swallowing? These are all the things we try to educate people to get a better understanding of what to do when these real crises flare up in their faces because a lot of times they end up fighting. And what people need to understand is that the person with dementia 
is not the one that's, I mean, they have the issue, the problem. But when you're a caregiver, you end up with all the stress because your brain is actually working for two people. And sometimes it becomes so bad that people have no idea what to do. What are the signs to look out for in cases of early onset? Good question. The 10 warning signs. It's memory loss that affects your day-to-day -day functioning. Difficulty performing a familiar task. Confusion about the time and place. Problems with language. Problems with abstract thinking. Poor or decreased judgment. Problems with misplacing things. There are many people sometimes say, I don't know where my keys are. I don't know where I put my glasses. And sometimes you might find the glasses in the refrigerator or you might find them in the freezer or, you know, or change in personality or behavior and loss of initiative. Those are the 10 warning signs. Okay, what are the first steps that you should take if you notice any of those signs that you just mentioned? Try to get to a doctor as quickly as possible where they can uh, properly diagnose you because that's important. A diagnosis is very important. So you need to, to get to the doctor. But, you know, a lot of times people don't go because they're afraid of what they might think is coming on. And eventually it will happen because you know what is interesting, Nicole? You can retire today and end up with dementia tomorrow morning. Wow. That's happened. You just retire and all of a sudden you wake up and you can't remember. You're in your own house and you don't even know that you're in your own house. Mm -hmm. It's a very frightening disease. I mean, we all have, there's so many diseases out there, cancer and all the others. But this one is so frightening because you have to be, you know, if you have cancer or something, you're still capable of writing your checks and making decisions. But with dementia, you are at total loss. Somebody stepping in to take over your your um, life. You know, you've worked all your life and you've saved your money and so on and decide, well, I'm going to take cruises with my husband and so on. And then all of a sudden you retire and then you can't do it. It's gone, totally. September 21st is World Alzheimer's Day and Light and Power is a sponsor of your Alzheimer's radio show on CBC Radio all month long. What is it that you hope to achieve by having a radio show? Well, we started on Friday and the response has been very good from that first program which we discussed what is dementia. And we have a series where we're working on five series. What is dementia? Diagnosing dementia, communication, behavior changes, and what is younger onset dementia. What I'm hoping to achieve is to get people to understand more about those particular areas because those are the areas that I find people constantly ask me about. We have a website, you can go on the website or you can call me at my 418-0741 or 283-9714. And the, the website is www alsbarbados.com we have tips on our facebook page anyone want to see them just check in on barbados alzheimer's association's facebook page we add to the tips every day so there's always something new thank you so much president pamelia burton for coming in today we appreciate the information that you've given it's been really insightful to say the least and i wish you well as you continue your efforts during this month thank you What's new from the Barbados Light and Power Company? Customer service excellence, safety, and education are some of the core values at Light and Power. So we're always thinking of ways to enhance our messages about these core values. Last month, we launched the first episode of our new puppetry education campaign. If you haven't yet seen the short informative episodes, you can view them on Light and Power's YouTube channel or on CBC TV News. We have received positive feedback on the series. Using our new puppet characters, Charles and Ivor, their neighbor Ozzy, and Ivor's best friend Cully. And we've noted your topic recommendations for further episodes. What's new from the Barbados Light and Power Company? The Fair Trading Commission's rate review hearing of Light and Power's application for a rate increase is scheduled to begin on September 21st and continues daily until October 6th. We have widely shared the company's reasons for the application on our social channels and What's New Radio. This month, we have selected excerpts from a virtual forum convened by the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry. 
Light and Power representatives Roger Blackman, Managing Director, Kim Griffith Tang Hao, Director Customer Solutions, Dr. Adrian Carter, Manager Regulatory Affairs, and Rakaido Jennings, Director of Finance, shared our views on the rate increase application and answered questions from BCCI members and the wider private sector. The moderator is Anthony Branker, President of the BCCI. To begin the forum, Managing Director Roger Blackman stated the proposed increase will allow Light and Power to maintain and improve a safe, reliable, and resilient electricity service that meets customers' need for a continued high-quality supply. The forum heard that even with the VAT reduction, a rate adjustment would still be necessary. To sustain the business, Light and Power requires sufficient funding to pay for the capital investments and to meet our operational costs. I wanted to go back to Adrian. When is the Clean Energy Bridge expected to be up and running? And if granted the rate increase, would the two happen simultaneously so that the retail sector will not see any significant increase, but actually see, as you are showing here, an average of maybe a 10% decrease? As I mentioned, the increase that we're proposing for that sample customer would be about a 2% bill increase. That's basically what that customer would actually see as a result of our proposed rates. Now, the Clean Energy Bridge actually came into operation about a few weeks ago. So customers are actually starting to see those savings in August. So in the August bill, customers would have actually seen a decline in their bill to the amount of about as much as eight cents per kilowatt hour they would have seen. So obviously that the energy bridge have come into operation before we have actually been granted an approval of foreign rate increase. But what we are seeing here is that the net result, one of the main factors driving our request for this increase is the investment. And the investment is resulting in a decrease as much as about 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Well, we are asking for an increase of about 5 cents per kilowatt hour. So the net result really to that retail customer is actually a bill decrease that they will actually see if we were to get our rates coincide to with the commissioning of the Clean Energy Bridge, which have already happened. But those customers are already seeing decreases relative to their July bill. Their August bill would have fallen by over 17, uh, 17%. I guess what we were saying is that our customers in the retail sector should have already been seeing a reduction because of the Clean Energy Bridge. And even with the proposed rate increase, it should be still a decrease over July and prior bills. Did I get that right? Um, That's correct. Rel relative right. to, say, May, if you were to compare yes. to month where the clean energy... So the clean energy bridge came into service, as you said, a few weeks ago. The first full month of operation would have been July. So the impact of it, you would have seen in the August bills. And so you're already seeing it, the, the impacts and the benefits from that should have shown through on the bills that you're receiving for this month. Um, okay. of, of course, on top of that was the VAT reduction for the first 250, but that is for residential, not, not, yes. the, not yes. this, this group here. Yeah. Yes. Okay, because that was a significant concern that we were going to be expecting significant increases in the retail sector. So I think that this slide does bring some measure of relief to that sector. With a 10% decrease overall, a net 10% decrease, I'm sure that persons will understand that the investment that you've been making has obviously made a full, better economic sense to everybody. What's new from the Barbados Light and Power Company? You've been listening to edited excerpts from the BCCI Forum on Light and Power's FTC application for a rates review. If you've missed some of this program or any of our monthly programs, you can catch up at our website, blpc.com.bb, and search for What's New Radio. We also have some of our longer interviews online and on our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at BLPC Online and on Twitter at TweetBLPC for up-to-date information. And visit our website, blpc.com.bb, to use our online customer self-service portal to find out more about our services, online billing, and payments. I'm Nicole Scantabury. Thank you for your company this month. Until next month, be safe. This program was produced for the Barbados Light and Power Company by SFA Communications.